sorry for the pickup, but good morning. We are Team Stamp, and we're so excited to present to you Wonder, an application that integrates your memories to make boring experiences more comfortable. But before we dive into our product, let's meet our team. So my name is Martha. I'm currently studying business with a focus on entrepreneurship and computer science, and I'm the lead in strategy for Wonder. Hi guys, my name is Peter Shortino, and I'm a quantitative finance major at Abercrombie Business School. And after college, I hope to focus on building out decentralized networks for the future. And for the for the our project, I focus on application functionality and data privacy. I'm Sue. I'm a human development and family sciences major. And for this project, I was lead in user research. Hi, I'm Taylor. I am working on a master's of advertising with a focus in design and branding, and I led design and UX on this project. So a few weeks ago, I found this picture in my Instagram feed of my friend studying abroad in front of the Chubby Fountain. But instead of posting a picture about maybe how amazing the gelato is or the historical significance, my friend posted, Lizzie McGuire, you're an alpha repeater. And decide which pick, haha, ha, hashtag, oh well, but I'm living my Lizzie McGuire dream. But hashtag, don't eat Apollo, hashtag, this is what dreams are So, um, why is my friend referencing a Disney show that we watched when we were younger, and I thought, maybe it's just my friends, maybe we're just weird, maybe we just love this in the player. But then I went searching the web, and I found this blog that someone said the Trevi Fountain was definitely my favorite part of Rome. Maybe it's because I felt like listening to the player. And then on Twitter, on YouTube, you can even see this girl who blocked her whole Rome trip with my listening to the player moment in Rome. So I thought, you know, what is so important about this experience? But then I remember when I was younger, closing my eyes and losing my wire as well, tossing that co coin in the Trevi Fountain, and then opening my eyes and seeing Paulo saying, Isabella? So <laughs> what have we learned in this experience? We found that one, people are now looking at these different landscapes, these different locations, not to their historical significance, not to the textbook definition of the Trevi Fountain, but to their personal connection. And two, we don't need a brain scan to access people's memories. It's already a digital archive for us to have. So we kind of developed our problem statement, which is what we began all of our research with, which is we found that foreign cultural experiences were not accessible to travelers because they were related to or entrenched in cultures unlike their own. In layman's terms, uh, foreign cultures are scary. I don't want to get involved. Uh, so that's kind of where we, we dove into the deep end of our research, and let's go into it. Yeah, so first in our secondary research, we said, why do people travel? People could spend money on material goods, people could spend money on healthcare, so why are they spending money on traveling? And we found out that through our user interviews and like the Huffington Post and other credible secondary sources, we found out it was, they traveled because of the happiness that they had from this experience. So then we looked at what uh, experiences on Yelp, why are they five star, what makes a five star experience? And we found out it was pretty much emotions. People got the chills when they were in an area, or they were open for interpretation and they were fueled by imagination. And this is what made a five-star experience on Yelp and TripAdvisor. So why were these experiences emotional? And well, we found out, well, it's memories. When people watched the Blue Planet and then later went on to take a trip to the Florida Keys, or maybe they walked around in the cones, even when they're not a business student, to remember when their family walked around and stopped to her there. And to bring all this research that we gathered into one very complex formula, we came up with this. <laughs> X plus E equals M. And I'm sure you're asking what that stands for. Well, it's experiences plus emotion, and those all together equals memories. And this cultivates our research points and brings it into one comprehensive formula. Yeah. So kind of bouncing off that, we wanted after we kind of established why people travel, we, or yeah, after we established why people travel, we wanted to see kind of what prevented them from immersing themselves in those experiences, and we took a really deep look at like culture. So the way we view culture presently is we kind of self-identify in groups. You know, you're white, you're black, you speak German, you like this, you like that, and we kind of segregate ourselves depending on our likes and dislikes, um, which kind of keeps us kind of separate. And you know, if you look at travel apps, it's Oh, experiences for people who love to hike. You know, it's 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 always identifying people, and we kind of wanted to take a different view. So we created the bubble theory, which is this idea that we all overlap, we all have common interests, we all have common traits, 
Um, and those can kind of be explored and pulled together, and our memories can kind of be pulled in, and it's like, well, you've got all of these common ways of experiences, let me reintroduce you to things that are similar in other places. So, from that, we got our pitch. Wonder makes foreign cultural experiences more relatable for travelers by linking them, uh, to, linking them to memories through innovative technology. Um, which is a mouthful and a lot, so to kind of go into it, we're going to introduce you to our user, Sam, and his journey. So, hello everyone, this is Sam. Sam, this is everyone. Um, <laughs> Sam is a 23-year-old college grad from Austin, and he's actually taking his first big trip abroad. And where he's going is China. Um, he's going to be backpacking for two weeks. And he's really excited because um, as he's planning the trip, he's realizing that everything in China is going to be so different. You know, the food's different, the people are different, the bathrooms are different. Um, and he's really excited about immersing himself in a place that's completely different from his own um, and learning something new about himself. Um, his itinerary is this. <laughs> 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 all, all of the hot spots, like the Great Wall, the Forbidden City. Um, but he's also intentionally left some room to kind of just wander around the city and do the things that locals do. But even before he's gotten on the plane, as Sam's at the airport, his craving for newness starts to fade into this absolute dread for the unknown. Um, as he's waiting to board his flight, he's realizing that a lot of the people who are filing in don't look anything like him. They're not speaking the same language as him. And now he's wondering, like, how am I going to know where to wander in the city? Or why am I going to do the things that locals do if I don't know why they're doing them just for the sake of doing them? Like, that seems a little strange. And how am I going to have an immersive experience if I can't uh, relate to the culture that's surrounding me? So in a panic, before he loses his access to the internet, um, Sam is searching the app store for translation apps and travel guides and anything and everything that will help him. Um, he downloads as many as he can before he leaves. And one called Wander catches his eye because it's not necessarily a travel app, but he reads that um, you can, it helps you make new memories abroad by linking them to old memories at home. And truthfully, Samuel is kind of already ready to be back at home. He hasn't even gotten on the plane yet, or he is on the plane now, but he's ready to be back at home. Uh, but alas, he boards his flight, and in a blur, he's in the hostel in China. And by the time that he arrives, it's midnight there, he's jet lagged, he's hungry, and he's looking for a place to eat. So he starts browsing through the apps, and Wanda recommends him a dumpling stand down the road. Um, and the recommendation is based on two pictures from his Instagram feed and his Facebook. And these two pictures pop up. One is of his friends, him and his friends, on a food truck after a long night up. And the other is a hashtag throwback Thursday um, from when he was making pierogies as a child with his Polish grandmother, his babcha. And intrigued, Sam walks down the street, follows the map, and makes his way to the stand. And as he gets there, he's, Sam is realizing that he would never have got to this place had he just done some Googling. Um, but it smells pretty good, seems like a pretty popular spot, and so he decides to stay. And it, he's realizing now that it's really different from anything that he's ever experienced before because it's just a storefront. There's not really a place to sit inside. It's not what he traditionally thinks of as a restaurant. Um, and on the left, there's a man behind the counter taking orders, and to his right, there's this older woman who is kneading out dough into these little flat discs um, at an impeccable speed, especially for a lady her age and stature. <laughs> and he's thinking, hmm, this reminds me a lot of my babcha, actually. And next to her is a young man. And this young man is putting some type of meat filling into these round discs of dough and sealing them up. And Sam is thinking, hmm. That, I guess that would have been me if that was my babcha, uh, if I had really mastered the art of making pierogies and moved at like 30 times the speed. Um, and Sam realizes that what they're making is Chinese dumplings. And he's had them before in Austin in Chinatown, but what he hasn't realized is that they're actually really similar to Polish pierogies, especially in the process of making them. And as Sam is wondering how similar they are in taste, Sam is also realizing that he has a really big dilemma that he's going to have to face, which is how is he going to order if he doesn't speak Chinese. So in a panic, Sam is thinking of all the ways that he could gesture, like all the different fillings that there are in there. Um, and now he's reached the point where I'm giving up. I need someone who speaks English. So he's scanning the crowd, looking around. He's panicked. And then the young man who's um, behind the counter is like, do you want an English menu? And Sam is so relieved to finally hear someone speak English. And he nods enthusiastically and um, starts browsing the menu. And as he's talking to this young man, Roger is his name, um, he's finding out that Roger actually used to live in the U.S., uh, but his family moved to China when he was in middle school. And because of this app called Wonder, a lot of 
people from the US or English-speaking countries have been visiting his grandmother's duckling stand. Um, for Roger, it's actually a really nice way for him to connect um, to his childhood um, and his memories of living in the US. It's something that he can't really talk to um, with other people who are in China. So after ordering and chatting for a while with Roger, um, Sam is feeling surprisingly comfortable with his surroundings. He's realizing um, that he's seeing a lot of people who are passing by who are just in groups of friends, or people coming home from work, um, people who are starting to hide out, or people who are in their PJs picking up takeout, people who are angry, waiting for their food. Um, and it's reminding him a lot of experiences that he's had at home. Um, and he's finding that out that he can relate to these people around him, even people that he's never met, um, in a whole different way. Uh, people in China also go out for food at this hour. People in China also wear PJs. People in China also get hungry waiting for their food. And realizing that he has these things in common with these strangers around him, Sam is feeling a lot more comfortable about the rest of this trip, and especially the time that he's allotted for just wandering around and doing the things that locals do. And to commemorate this memory, and feeling so at home in such a faraway place, Sam snaps a picture and posts this on his Instagram hoping that this moment can serve as a beacon of comfort for a sense adventure. So how do you take all of that um, and kind of wrap it up into a design? Um, and that was kind of something that we all played with. I think everybody had a part in kind of building up what this app would look like. Um, so we'll go for a storyline screen. Super simple, this is just what pops up. Um, but I'll kind of break down why we made some of the big design choices we did. Um, so first with our color, we wanted something that really set us apart from a lot of traditional travel apps. Uh, the majority of travel apps out there are orange, blue, or uh, red in kind of association. Uh, mostly blue and orange, a lot of blue and orange. Uh, and so we kind of wanted something that set us apart, you know, because we weren't there to necessarily plan somebody's whole trip. We weren't there to, you know, pick a flight. It was, we're there for this, these kind of moments and these experiences. Um, wonder comes from the idea of both wandering around a city and the sense of wonder you get when you're in a new place. Um, there's a play on that kind of like joy and mystery and the sense of adventure you get. Um, your next memory waits. It's, it's obvious. I mean, your next memory is out there. You just kind of need maybe a nudge to get out there and go get it. Um, and stamp, uh, as Martha introduced earlier, is a play on all of our initials and this idea that like stamps were used to kind of translate the earliest memories. You know, we said pictures. It's how you sent letters, it's how you sent packages, it's how you got all this information out there. And so we wanted to play with that. This is what Wonder looks like when you open it. Um, and I like it, I love it, I think it's really cool. <laughs> uh, but we, we went through several iterations. So this idea is that the top would be a map that would kind of integrate with whatever your map of choice is, whether it's Google Maps or Apple Maps. Um, probably Google Maps is better. Um, but it would kind of show you kind of what's around, what wonder would ping that you'd be interested in. Um, this recommend button, which is what our story also plays off of, is this idea that you would open up the app, you're, you're tired, it's late, or you're, you know, you're, you're kind of bored and lonely, and you click recommend, and it would pull from all the, like, all the data we pull from, which we'll go, I'll go into shortly, um, and kind of make the best recommendation for you. Um, and then our quick picks are just a list of like nearby things sorted in a way that you can kind of wander through and pull. Um, next is our user menu. Um, so the top is just kind of your basic login, log out, who you are. Um, our system settings is where everything else is listed. Um, it's how you change your password, it's how you change your search parameters, so what you look for, when you're looking for it, kind of what you're interested in, how far you're willing to travel. Um, account access. So like we said, this is, this is an app that pulls and builds off of memories from your own, which comes from this idea that we're all developing a digital footprint, uh, but nothing's being done really with those pictures and with those statuses and with those check-ins. Um, and Wonder would kind of amalgamate that and being able to suggest these, these destinations for you. Um, and then of course, help and contact and stuff like that. This is what would pull up when you either click recommend or when you click to place. Um, it would be you know, the map, some pictures, basically anything that a basic Yelp page would have. Um, it just kind of presented to you in a really neat and kind of condensed way. But in the middle, we have our bread and butter, our match criteria. This is why we believe, or why Wonder believes this location or this suggestion is best for you. Um, and if you were to click one of them, it would pull up kind of a little bit of the post, and then it would pull up why it thinks you know, it matches. So for this food truck, 
You know, it, you often wonder if you often go to these different styles of food trucks, these different styles of mobile but kind of pickup places. Um, it seems that you visit them more during late nights, which is, of course, when Sam was going out. He's going out in the middle of the night. Um, and go alone or with friends. So you might necessarily not always check in or tag somebody in your posts. And it sees that, so it's like, okay, well, you're comfortable doing this alone. It's late at night. Here's the suggestion. Um, but building on that, how, how do we take this and actually turn it into something? Um, and Peter's going to go into that. Yeah, so to cultivate these screens that we built, we're going to have to use some innovative technology. So for our wire framing, we're using Envision, pretty standard, but it does offer a lot of functionality and allows us all to collaborate and build a great prototype. Now, we move down to the actual building of the application. We're going to utilize React Native, which is founded and funded by Facebook. And it's being the leading edge JavaScript code for companies such as Airbnb, Tesla, and Netflix. We're seeing companies start to utilize this to not only move their applications from iOS, but to Android very quickly and efficiently. And what does all this bring to Wonder? Well, it brings results. You're going to get a visually appealing app, a functional application, and we're going to be able to infinitely scale as big as Facebook allows us to under the resources they have built and put into the open source React Native. Now, I know everybody is a little bit touchy on data security. It's very important. We've witnessed Facebook come in the recent weeks and open up everybody's eyes to a lot of these issues. Therefore, we're going to use a blockchain. We're going to use encrypted usage data, meaning we're going to change any of your data that is personal to you and unique to you into ones and zeros. No business or company, and that includes Wander, will get specific personal usage data. It'll be generalized and encrypted, and will not know it's actually Peter or Martha, just a one and zero. Now, what data are we actually using? We're going to keep it kind of low for now while we're starting. We're going to use uh, the encrypted travel and pattern data. And then more importantly, since this is a human AI interconnection, we're going to really uh, focus on the collaboration amongst users and places on the application. And then one thing that we think can be very innovative and a beacon of hope for the tech industry is we seek to pay people for the use of their user encrypted data. First off, we're going to extra length to make sure that their personal data isn't tied to it. We're going to take that next step to make sure that our user has the best experience and they stay on the application. By paying them for the use of the data, we're going to do that. So how is this going to work? Well, there will be a distributed credit or token that we give if any time your user data is generated or pushed out. This could be micro cents, it could be one cent based on the amount of data. But what's this going to do? It's going to keep this business and user relationship intertwined. And people not only will keep this relationship intertwined, but it will all happen within the boundaries of the app, which bodes well for longer. And to talk more about the business, I'd love to hand over to Martha. Awesome. So we talked about this really cool, but kind of like a fluffy idea. And then we have some pretty pitches, but how exactly are we going to operate in a competitive market landscape? So first, let's look at some revenues and costs. Um, the costs we know will have really high upfront costs. We're going to have to develop this algorithm, we're going to have to develop this app. How are we going to market? How are we going to get people on this platform? And of course, like salaries for the employees. For revenues, I mean, we can have advertisements on our application. We can also have encrypted data on the uh, consumption, so we'll be showing rather trends, um, selling that data to others, and those business partnerships. Imagine, we talked about the dumpling company um, having that journey. What if a corporation could what if the nonprofit were expanding outside of not just food choices, but you could do movie places if the opportunities are pretty much endless? So we don't have any specific numbers because if you think about it, these partnerships could range from hundred dollars to a million to maybe even a billion. But we know that um, we'll probably have a negative profit margin in our first and second year, but for the long term, this is a positive investment. Then we conducted a SWOT analysis to see some of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So with this data, we know that we're extremely personalized, but also we have strong ethics and we're using taking actions such as that blockchain to make sure that this data isn't compromised. We're also entering the blue ocean. No one is really doing recommendations based on memories yet, so we'd be the first market player here. Then we also have some weaknesses. Right now, there's a big distrust of the data management, and furthermore, we have no brand loyalty. No one knows what stamp is, who are we, so that is something that we'll have to overcome as well. 
some opportunities as maybe a possible acquisition. We have an additional revenue stream with ads. And then also companies can maybe purchase their journeys. They can sponsor their journeys. Imagine like in and out when they get to get the California experience. So there's a lot of opportunities to partner there. Then so with our threats, we have other data enriched companies. Other companies already have so much data and they've heard about this idea, they might be able to do it on their own. There's also fear of data privacy and a lack of trust. So how exactly would we mitigate these risks? Well, we have the three risks of data privacy, lack of trust, and data rich companies. For data privacy, we want to make sure we're very transparent, we offer an opt-in model, and of course, we're taking the action with the blockchain. Then the lack of trust, we want to make sure we have local and global partnerships and sponsorships. We'll be able to get people recognizing brand names. So, oh, if in and out trust this, okay, I can be on this app. Or, oh, if this nonprofit trusts this, maybe I can be here as well. It doesn't have to be super national, it could also be local, such as like Torch's Tacos or that sand um, down on 6th Street. Then, with data rich companies, what we could do, we could work with them, we could maybe be acquired, but also we could develop multi dimensional partners, right? This memory algorithm isn't just for one industry. Imagine, like, if Watson could give better data can let the user understand more about the different insights they want to give by relating them to past memories. Or maybe if Google, if I'm just searching food, it already knows if it's 2 a.m., I want some Thai food. So those are the risks and those are how we mitigate them. So in taking the proper measures to um, ensure that the user, like Sam's, uh, privacy and autonomy, we believe that Wonder has the potential not only to change the way that people travel, but also how we make meaning of the digital archive that we have. Um, currently, the main purposes that we have for this digital archive were to socialize when we had initially posted it, um, and con to contextualize ourselves in our relatively immediate circles, so usually people that we know or um, know of. Um, but in an increasingly globalized and connected world, uh, our vision for Wander is that it'll use social media to help us contextualize ourselves in a much broader scope. Um, so that instead of looking at culture like this on the left, we can look at it like something on the right. Um, and instead of culture looking something like this, 